I have had this BD Storm 450 torch for about two years when uh, no no problems at all for those two years um, used with the dedicated Lion battery packs um, until this happened now this seems to be, once you start looking around on the internet this seems to be an issue in that the little clip that holds the battery compartment shut and keeps it watertight can break. So that diamond were very proactive and they quickly got me out a replacement back unit with a new clip, uh, integral clip. But there's clearly an issue here in that it's a plastic part that's not up to the job. So this back that I'm using here is actually using a 3D printed replacement. I sourced a bunch of these on the internet. Um, you can find the files freely available. I'll put, uh, I'll put the one that I used in the video description. And I've been using it for a few weeks now. Seems pretty good. I, uh, I've changed the battery a couple of times because I've been away a few times and so far it's it's holding up okay um, but I suspect it's going to break in the longer term anyway so really we need to um, make a more durable replacement which is kind of the point of this video so the first thing to do is to show you how to remove uh, the original one or if you're watching this it's probably going to be realistically the stub of the original broken one so it's very easy to, to take these um, lamp unit off the back unit it's just a question of rotating it through to 90 degrees and then just firmly but carefully snapping it off the hinges which is two little pins now clearly there's not an infinite number of times you're going to be able to do this so you want to make sure that whatever replacement you use uh, is there for the longer term rather than just continually popping in and out with new back units that Black Diamond will or presumably at some point will not be willing to ship out to people who have had this problem. Uh, it is worth noting that there's no contacts on these back units so the lamp will function without a properly closed back unit if you're up in the hills and this goes wrong, it's not ideal, but you could probably cobble something together to keep it shut uh, using uh, zip ties or uh, uh, sticking plasters or a bit of Velcro, you know, the sort of thing that you would tend to have in your pack if you're away walking or biking or climbing. Um, it would probably be less waterproof, which is kind of the point of this poorly designed closure. Um, but that's the state of play as we are. We're going to put this to one side. So I'm left here, this is the original back with a 3D printed hinge unit that I substituted in just out of curiosity. So what I'm going to do now, having proved that the 3D printed hinge works, I'm going to remove it and replace it with something that I'm hoping is going to be more durable. So first off, how do you go about removing it? So this hinge unit is a two-part unit held in place by two pins. You have this main part which is connected to the back unit with a pin through here and then the part that's prone to breaking, the actual clip, is held in place with another pin here. Now these pins are just simple press fit pins, one end is slightly bigger than the other and knurled so when you push them out you have to put them back in the opposite way so they're in the same orientation to reflect this and uh, for both of them the way that you want to be punching them out is from the end that's slightly recessed, that's the narrow end. When I first did it the first time it was quite tricky and I ended up finding that the easiest way was to remove the whole unit in one go and then clip this in a vise 
and remove the uh, the broken stub to replace it. Uh, I'm hoping now that it's slightly looser. Again, you're not going to be able to do this an infinite number of times, which is why we want to make a more durable solution. I'm hoping that now it's loosened up slightly. I'll get away with just doing it in situ. And the way I'm going to do it is I've got this. Um, it's a watchmaker, a watch repair tool. It's the kind of thing used for um, punching out uh, the strap uh, pins on a watch. Um, you can buy them for a couple of quid. And it's just a question of figuring out which is the recessed, the recessed end, which is this end. So we'll do that. It's probably not going to be particularly clear, but you'll get the drift of what I'm doing. Okay, so you may be able to see now that the uh, the pin has mainly come out and there's a slightly wider and slightly serrated edge which is what holds it in place when it goes back in. So we'll push it all the way out and at that point you can remove what would be the broken one. And uh, as I say, remember that the pin has got to go back in the way it came out. So what we'll do is, just to avoid any confusion, we'll put it back in now. While we're... Just leave it there, make sure it doesn't fall out, because if you lost that, you, you have got a problem. And then, as far as the replacement's concerned, what I'm going to try and do is make one out of a bar of aluminium uh, that will be a tougher more durable replacement. So after a bit of trial and error I came up with this aluminium clip um, just using simple files and doing it by eye with the vise um, and the unfortunate thing is it doesn't quite work. Um, what I found was that as I was um, as I was making it, I just couldn't get the cam action. It just so I was filing it away a little bit at a time, and then eventually it got to the stage where it was working. But it just doesn't feel very secure. It kind of works, and uh, I kept taking away a little bit at a time, and then at some point it just started feeling less secure. <clears throat> and I think um, I think the issue is the lack of flex in this aluminium. I think, I suspect, that uh, you need a certain amount of flex in the product just to get this cam action just to securely lock over. So it's a little disappointing. Um, I mean, you can 3D print aluminium and steel. Uh, it's not something I have any knowledge of. Uh, I suspect that if you did make an exact replica of one of these in 3D uh, in uh, metal it wouldn't work because as I say there's a certain amount I, th I think there's a certain amount of flex is needed to get this thing to work properly so I'm going to be going back and uh, initially using the replacement back that Black Diamond kindly sent to me and when that breaks two years down the line I shall then start working my way through the various PETG 3D printed replicas that I've got. Um, it's not ideal, but um, I think I've established that if it goes on the hill, you can fix it well enough to get off the hill. And uh, when you are back in civilization, you will be able to effect some kind of repair that means that your black diamond torch will not be landfill. Um, so hopefully that's been of some use. Like and subscribe.